In this video, we're going to learn about the jQuery spinner, not the tooltip, but as is in the title right now. I changed the background color. What is a spinner? A spinner is literally a way for you to enable your users to input text in a very controlled way, enabling you to control. So such as, for example, maybe you want to let people choose to add into your form a value between 1 and 100, but they could only put the values of 10, 20, and so forth. Um, it, so it basically gives you control. So what we're going to do now is let's build it out. It's really, really easy. Um, and like any other of the components, you're always encouraged to go into the documentation and figure out how to add more features and how to control it better. So I'm just going to update the name here in the title to Spinner because I forgot to do it earlier. Spinner. Yep, that's Spinner. Um, and into our body. So in our body, literally what we do is we create a new input. Usually it would be inside of a form. That input type is going to be a little bit different than what we've done so far, but the type itself is going to be spinner. The next step after your input is inside of a type spinner is literally that's it. That's all you have to put inside of your input box, and you could close down your input. Now, we want to give it a name so we could access it, so I'm just going to give it an ID so I could easily fetch it from um, our function. By the way, obviously, if this was something that would be submitted in a form, then it would have to have a name as well. So the information would be then sent in the post or the get to, a, to the server to give it basically a variable name that, that's being sent out. But let's give it an ID, and the ID that we're going to give it is spinner, because we have only one spinner on the page. Our next step is to go into that um, starter up function that, that we've been working with so far as well. And literally what we want to do is just fetch that element. So I'm going to use my dollar function again, and I'm going to call my spinner. And I almost forgot to put there a hashtag before to make sure that I'm approaching an ID. Once I've done that, all I have to do to enable it and set it up is just start up my spinner. I could save that information. And that's all I literally had to do to get a spinner up and running. And if I click on refresh on my page, you'll see that now I have a spinner and I could go up and down. And just before, let's do one more thing before we close up this topic is let's see how you could limit the values. Let's say we only want the values to be 0 and 100. And we want the step size not to be 1 point, but to be 10 points. So to do that, what I would do is I'll go back into my editor and I would add a few options inside of my spinner itself. So first of all, my minimum value, I want to be 0. My max value, I want to be 100. And I want my step size to be 10. Once I did that and I saved it, all I, that's all I have to do. Now, once I go into my document, you'll see that if I click on the up, it's going to go 10 all the way to 100 and then stop and all the way down and then stop. Only problem is, is if I'll type your 55 and tab out, I still could put a value that's not right. But that you'll have to figure out on your own. Just go into the documentation. It's quite easy to figure it out. And if you have any issues, you're always encouraged to contact me. Um, you could find me on Twitter at zero to geek.